this house is what took me uh, from zero at 21 years old, net worth of zero dollars at 21 years old, to having done over $200 million worth of real estate transactions. This right here, man, this is it. This is where uh, Holton Wyatt started, dude. Like, this is the property, and this right here is literally uh, where I used to work, dude. I used to have, like, this big, like, push-button board right here. You know, at that frame of mind, right, just some kid, 21 years old, I'm just happy at this point that, like, it's a cool-looking house, and uh, I could get hammered drunk with my buddies, and I don't have to drive, right? I could walk to the bars on the corner of the streets, right? So that's actually, like, a selling point for me at this time. And if you kind of look at it, uh, these posts are just as crooked as all hell. Uh, so it was going good, but you know, things change, lifestyle change. You got to take action when the market tells you to take action, number one. Number two, uh, it's very nice to be able to pull up to your first house in a car that costs more than your first house to build a pool that's going to cost more than your first house, right? So I'd play with the little kids, get some dunks in. I didn't hold back. Playing eight-year-olds, it's pretty much the only time I get to win at basketball or dunk on people, so... So believe it or not, this video that we're doing right now, this is literally uh, a video 14 years in the making, right? I'm 35, 35 years old right now, and I started my real estate career when I was 21 years old, okay? And we're gonna be going to the first house I ever bought. Uh, I actually lived in this house. I house hacked this house, right? This house is what took me uh, from zero at 21 years old, net worth of zero dollars at 21 years old, to having done over $200 million worth of real estate transactions. As I talk to you guys here at the uh, ripe old age of 35. Like going from where I was at 21 to where I'm at right now at 35, it, it seems like a dramatic change uh, for just a 14 year time period. And I mean, believe it or not, like if you actually look at like how much my life has changed, like yeah, monetarily, financially, right? Things are completely out of the uh, realm of whatever I thought was possible at that time, right? Like when I bought that house, when I bought this house that we're on the way to, it's literally at the end of this street, right? As I pull in to this parking lot, like right there, you see that bar? I'm 21 years old. I work at a Radio Shack. I'm making like, dude, I don't know, freaking $30,000 a year. I'm making like 30 grand a year, 21, managing a Radio Shack. And the fact that that bar right there is on the corner, and the fact that right here as we get to this street, there's another bar on the corner of my actual street, <laughs> like as a 21 year old, uh, these are both uh, these were like selling points for me on part of why I'm buying the house, right? Like I knew I wanted to get into real estate, but like, you know, at that frame of mind, right? Just some kid, 21 years old. I'm just happy at this point that like it's a cool looking house and uh, I could get hammered drunk with my buddies and I don't have to drive, right? I could walk to the bars on the corner of the streets, right? So that's actually like a selling point for me at this time, right? It's just so crazy how much your life changes, right? Like now, you know, I got this multi-million dollar business. Like I said, we've done $200 million in transactions. We're running a $75 million rental property portfolio. I'm married, I have children. Like it's, it's just so wild uh, how much things can change in, you know, a little bit over a decade. So it's, yeah, it's, it's not really get rich quick, but at the same frame of mind, 14 years is a, uh, a pretty short uh, a short timeline to go from buying a house primarily because it's really close to being able to go to a bar uh, to running a multi-million dollar business you know another thing that's like just wild to me right like <clears throat> the the truck that I'm actually driving uh, right now I'm pulling into the driveway here it's the first time I've been back to this house and friggin Oh, I don't know. I don't think I've stepped foot on this property in like six years, right? And this truck that I'm currently driving right now is actually more than what I paid for this house, right? So it's, it's just wild to show you guys how much your lives can change. Now, I told you guys I was running a Radio Shack when I bought this thing. Glad to see my solar-powered Radio Shack security light is still there. Looks like my guy's got the 
for sale sign already up for me. And I have to put this bad boy in the middle of the yard. I decided it was time to sell this, right? So I've owned this thing for 14 years. I've lived here for seven or eight years, okay? So live in the house for seven or eight years. I house hacked it. I actually had my brother uh, renting a room for me at the time. And then once we started making a little money, we moved out, of course, got a nicer house with the wife, had some kids. At this point, I decided it was time to actually sell it, right? 14 years in. That's what you guys got to understand about this business. You can't get too sentimental with these properties. You got to actually uh, utilize these properties in a way that's going to make you money. I told you I hadn't been here in like seven years. I don't I haven't even been inside to see the renovation. I got to actually look at my phone uh, to get the lockbox code here. So, like I said, you don't you don't want to get in to the habit of you know getting emotionally involved with these properties, right? Because what you guys gotta understand, if you want to make money in this business, you have to treat the properties almost like they're a stock, right? Almost like, you know, what can the properties do for me and my family as a financial uh, investment? Like for me right now, like why did I choose today? Like why 14 years in? Uh, was now the time to sell it? Well, for two reasons. Number one, market conditions, right? Uh, the seller's market, at no point since I've purchased this house has it ever been what it's worth today, right? So that's option A. And then option B, these investments, they have to work for you. They have to work for us, right? Like you could just get sentimental and be like, oh, this is my first house. I'm gonna keep it forever. I'm gonna run it forever as a rental. But dude, why do that? Right now, I'm currently building my family a mansion, right? We're doing a seven bed, seven bath, 10 car garage, 7,000 square foot mansion on 30 acres on the outskirts of Cleveland. And guess what? I'm taking the profits from this house and I'm gonna flip that into a swimming pool. This house is great. Making money off this house passively is great. Uh, it's cool to kind of come back and see the memories. Like this is literally the fridge I had uh, when we moved out. I bought this fridge at Lowe's. It's like a $3,000 fridge. Uh, we had some great tenants in here, dude. Uh, if I didn't want to freaking go swimming with my family, <laughs> I probably would have kept this thing, right? It worked out really good. I lived here for seven years. I throw those tenants in there. Had no issues with those tenants. Never uh, had to do a turnover other than the first turnover, right? Uh, so it was going good, but you know, things change, lifestyle change. You got to take action when the market tells you to take action, number one. Number two, uh, it's very nice to be able to pull up to your first house in a car that costs more than your first house to build a pool that's going to cost more than your first house, right? Your boy Jay Wise put that little coat rack right here. And then up here we got the attic that during the entire time I lived here, I don't think I went up here more than one time. Cause this is like a death, look at this, come up in here. Don't be shy. This is a death defying ladder, right? The ladder comes down, but look, the thing is right over the steps into the basement. So it's like petrifying. So I think I went up there like one time. <clears throat> so down here in the basement, man, like it's, it's not fancy. It's nothing special. Like we got super low ceilings, you know, these hundred year old houses, but Back in the day, man, the basement was kind of a fun happening spot, right? We're, you know, we're younger and stuff, so like, we used to have a pool table in this general area. Had a big old bar right here. We had set up some TVs and stuff like that. You know, we had like big area rugs, right? I even got uh, the same, uh, check this out. We got the same Motley Crue sticker, right? I put this Motley Crue sticker on the furnace, <laughs> like, I don't know, probably at least 10, 12 years ago, right? And then we actually built this room, right? Me and my brother built this room for him. And, uh, you know, this is where he lives, right? You know, with where we're at right now, it's kind of wild uh, looking at things and like looking at this room. But, you know, back in the day, man, when you didn't have a lot of money, uh, you had to do what you had to do, right? We also built this bathroom over here too. You probably just pop in there and uh, we built that bathroom 
And, uh, you know, I'll be honest with you, the craftsmanship on that bathroom is not the greatest, right? If you take a look at the drywall, like that's a little jacked up. But, you know, me and my brother, we actually built this uh, back before they got that fake Ford Loco. This was back when they had the original Ford Loco. And those of you who are on the know on the Ford Loco, man, we should be happy these walls are standing uh, that we we're able to get it up. But I'll be honest with you guys, we didn't take Holton Wise from zero to 200 million in the last 14 years because I myself uh, am a skilled craftsman, right? I just know how to put people in the right places to succeed, right? So for all those out there that are thinking about potentially investing in Holton Wise, don't you worry. Uh, James Wise himself, uh, fueled with four locos, won't be in your house doing any of your drywall work. <laughs> And as far as numbers go, you know, when I paid for this thing, I bought it $85,500. But on top of that, I actually got paid to buy it, okay? Because when I bought this thing for $85,500, we are coming out of the 08 crash, right? The 08 crash was unlike any other time in the history of our world, right? It was so hard for people to be able to sell houses. This was actually a flipped house. Uh, so it looked... A little similar to this, honestly. Uh, it doesn't look too much different. Like, my guys just redid this, right? This is brand new carpet, re repainted everything. But like I said, the kitchen and stuff, it's all pretty much the same. Uh, well, those appliances, I put all three of those appliances in when I lived here. When I originally bought the thing, uh, we originally had a white, a white stove, a white dishwasher, and a white fridge. And then through the seven years or so I lived here, I ended up swapping them all out for these steel ones. And then the tenants I had in here, until now, uh, they also use those. But 85500 right? That's what I paid for this thing. And back then, there was the federal government and the local city here giving grants, okay? The federal government was giving first-time home buyers 10% down payment assistance, right? So 855 I got $8,500 from the federal government. On top of that, I also got... Uh, another 8500 from the city of Parma. That's a suburb here in the Cleveland area, right? So I got, what was that, sixteen, that's $17,000, right? I got 10%, right, to buy this house. And the down payment on this house, it was an FHA loan, folks. It's only 3.5% down, right? So, like, if it's a $100,000 house, you're talking 3500 Well, this is an $85,000 house, right? So under $3,000 for my down payment, and I get... $16,000 of assistance, right? So that's how I started this whole thing, this whole business, right? This was the first move. Not glamorous, nothing crazy. I'm just some young kid managing Radio Shack, building his brother a room, his brother's uh, helping pay some of the bills, just a little bit of house hack action. So this outlet right here, that's actually covering up a hole. It's now an outlet. I had my guys run electricity to it. But back when I lived here, uh, I actually just drilled that hole myself in the hardwood floor because my TV and all that stuff was set up here, okay? And this is 14 years ago. Yes, there is Wi-Fi, but if you're trying to do a lot of work or you're trying to like stream things or put video games on big screen TVs or do this or that, like Wi-Fi back then wasn't as fast as hardline it in, right? So Ethernet cords, HDMI cords, you name it. I had like a ton of cords uh, running up because the main cable box was here and we had a bunch of TVs in the basement for like football parties and things. But uh, it was important because you had the main cable box here, the TV here, and then right in here is actually where my original office was. So I had at the time, my computer desk was actually like right here, you know, and I would sit here and I had my computer was connected to the TVs and things like that, and then all the internet and ran to other devices downstairs, right? So I had, you know, a bunch of DJ speakers and stuff for, for parties, but that's why that outlet's there and it all, you know, we had to get the cords under the, the floor there. And this right here, man, this is it. This is where uh, Holton Wise started, dude. Like, this is the property and this right here is literally uh, where I used to work, dude. I used to have, like, this big, like, push-button board right here. And this is back, like, when the company first got started, like, we were literally physically collecting checks and I would physically be the person dealing with the tenants and actually collecting their checks, right? So as things got bigger and like would expand, we got more sophisticated, but like at the beginning, like dude, I literally got like checks and like all the tenants, like check receipts are like pinned to the wall, like right here on this big bulletin board. And like, it's just like archaic to think about how it all ran 
at that time versus how it runs today. But that that's that's real life, man. That's that's business, guys. That's that's what I'm talking about. Like real estate can make you rich, can make you wealthy. Like you don't like don't get discouraged, right? Like people come out there and they're like, whoa. Well, I don't have all this money or I don't have all this team or these resources. I, I can't get into that. I, I didn't come from money, blah, 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 blah. Dude, either did I, either did Holton Wise. Like humble beginnings like this is where it all started. And you just got to put the effort in and then you get a little bit more money and resources behind you after what you did succeeds. And then you up your game, up your game, up your game, up your game. And then eventually, you know, if you're lucky enough and you worked hard enough, you might get to the point where you could have a house that you haven't been to in seven years and the only reason you're coming back to it is because it's the last time you're ever going to have an opportunity to film a video like this where you tell people, hey, if you work hard enough, you might be able to turn your first house into a pool. And then this used to be the big old yard, right? Used to have the dogs running around. I had two Yorkies just running around, barking at people. I built an invisible fence. Uh, during the period in which I lived here, uh, I eventually stopped working at Radio Shack, and at one point I was working at Invisible Fence, uh, installing fences, selling fences, and you know, I had the product out here in the yard. The dogs would be barking as people walk. It's pretty crazy uh, how pumped I was that this was like, you know, my little piece of land, my little piece of real estate. This is my area for my dogs. To go from that to 30 acres is pretty wild, but you know, uh, for the time, humble beginnings, whatnot. This uh, this was the joint, man. At 21 years old, I was pretty pumped on it, right? I actually got this fence built when I bought the house. Uh, this fence wasn't here. Well, it was like a joint effort, right? I had this dude. His name was Reno. Kid was on Craigslist. I built the fence, but I didn't want to do the... Uh, the post holes right so i get this kid he says he'll come out and do it uh for a hundred bucks so this dude comes out and he digs like half of them breaks the shovel has to go back to the store and get some more supplies and by the time this fucking guy is done with everything i feel like he had a helper with him and it took him like two days to do all these he did them by hand i thought he'd have like a post hole digger no dude just does them with a shovel i felt like by the end of the job he actually had lost money and if you kind of look at it uh these posts are just as crooked as all hell uh, but I felt like the dude had lost money on the job so I didn't even fuck with it I just rolled with it like I said man when I bought the house I was pumped that there was uh, freaking two bars on the corner I saw my neighbor over here you know he had some, he had kids right and his one son and all the neighborhood friends you know they'd always be around and I had this low hoop and because uh, you know I just fastened it to the garage it's obviously not regulation height. It's only like seven and a half feet or something. So all the young kids, they'd want to play on the hoop because, you know, it's so much lower, so much easier. So I'd play with the little kids, get some dunks in. I didn't hold back. Playing eight-year-olds, it's pretty much the only time I get to win at basketball or dunk on people. So it worked out pretty good, man. And, uh, yeah, had a little extra pad built here to park the cars and trucks and then a uh, a little extra storage with that shed, man, and that was it. That was Mikasa at the time, man. Big changes over the last 14 years, I tell you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.